Hey guys, as you know, I went to PAX Prime 2012 uh, in Seattle, and uh, I promised I'd post some videos, but I decided after I'd just make a giant montage of uh, all the shit I did, uh, which I thought would be kind of cool. Uh, so I, I guess I'll go over it. Um, not all the videos have good sound, so I'll commentate some of it just to tell you what's going on. Uh, the first one I'm going to tell you about is uh, this is Hydra playing against machine with in control uh, commentating it and uh, uh, in control is 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 a giant man who keeps getting in the way of my camera uh, and he was cracking some jokes about artosis pylons or something like that uh, but I didn't get I didn't manage to get a picture uh, with them uh, but it, it was, it was kind of cool to see them playing um, Andrew doesn't seem to be uh, trying that hard obviously this is probably this is like a showcase match I guess uh, so I guess they're just playing standard builds and stuff like that, and they're, and they're just, uh, uh, this is like some RAM booth or something, one of their sponsors, uh, so it was, it was really cool seeing them in person, I've, I've actually never, I've, I've always uh, seen them in competitions, but never, never ever in person, so that was, that was, that was a really neat thing to see on day one, uh, it was great, and you can just kind of see him, oh, oh, he's playing Terran? Oh, okay. Well, that explains a lot. I actually didn't notice that one. I was right beside the speaker here, so you can't actually hear shit. Uh, so that, that would be pretty much the reason why I'm, I'm talking over it and continue to do so. Uh, but, they're, but they're just cracking jokes, having fun. Uh, and I'm just in the back, uh, trying not to agitate uh, the in control as uh, he, will, he, he could probably kick my ass. So I figured, I figured it was not a good idea. So they have like giant monitors up there showing what they're doing. So yeah, and and of course you know you got to get Idra talking about shit. It, that that's what everyone comes to these things for. Let's let's be honest. And this is uh, this is pretty much everywhere. So nearby, if you saw a camera pa pa um, panning, there was actually this, which was like an aliens versus predator uh, model, which is kind of cool. And you can actually sit down in the chair and get a nice picture with it. So that's kind of neat. Um, and a, and a little bit of somewhere else, there's a there's Firefall, which is some new free-to-play game. Uh, I didn't actually get the chance to try it. Um, it didn't actually look too interesting to me. It's some free-to-play game. I'm not too sure. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I, if, if you love that game, there's a couple of people who are really into it. Um, so, sorry. I didn't get the chance to see it, so I'm, I'm, I'm very deeply sorry about that. Um, if For anyone who's a fan of The Walking Dead... Uh, Telltale Games had a really nice booth, and I, I figured I'd take a nice picture of it. Uh, at one point, someone screamed outside, and they're like, who's here for Telltale Games? Woo! And, I, and I'm just like, okay, you're, you're here for point-and-click games. Nah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, here's a Planet Side 2 booth, which I had the opportunity actually to play a little bit, and um, it felt to me, like, uh, when I was playing it, it, was kinda, it felt kind of like Battlefield, but very, very empty. And this is probably because it's still in development and it was really, really buggy as well, uh, which was kind of strange. Um, I, I don't really know uh, what was going on with that. But I did manage to get a beta key, which is kind of nice. Uh, so, uh, but there was another surprise at this booth. At several, at several points, uh, Total Biscuit was there. And here's, here, here's, here's me taking video of him. Oh my god, it's Total Biscuit. He's commentating. Why is that being? Total Biscuit's commentating, and he recognized me when he looked at me. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's Nisi's darkest and deepest dream. He knows who I am. That's totally fine. And right afterwards, we managed to uh, actually get him, and we took a picture with him. So uh, that's that's Total Biscuit, uh, my bro. Uh, so, uh, so we managed to bother him and be uh, total fanboys and all that. Um, we next, uh, well, one of the next things I'll, I'll talk about is um, we had, there was actually a huge. I didn't actually get a picture of the Borderlands, how many people were lined up, but the line was goddamn huge. Like it was, it was ginormous. The line. So I didn't bother playing Borderlands, and it's not like I really it was really on my mind because it's coming out later this month, uh, which I'll be probably LPing it by uh, in October or something. 
Um, but it's kind of, you know, um, I, I kind of know what to expect from the game, so I don't realize why so many people were there. That You weren't really trying anything. Uh, especially since most sequels, like Borderlands 2, it's exactly like Borderlands 1, except you got like a couple of new mechanics like Gunzerker and stuff, and, appar and apparently I heard it's, it was only the arena, uh, some sort of arena mode that they were playing in the back there. So I don't really see the point, um, and I'm, maybe this uh, less than others actually, because um, maybe I can kind of understand, you know, there's excitement for Borderlands 2, blah, 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 whatever. I, I'm so, I don't mean to invalidate that. Uh, I just, I, I, as I said, I didn't see the point in actually going and playing it. But actually, I didn't take a picture of this, but at the uh, at the Halo booth um, nearby, there was uh, there was a t there was a lineup for that too, and that one looked even less original than than Borderlands Two. Um, no offense to anyone who's a Borderlands or, or Halo fan, but that was just like it was is literally just a couple of updated graphics. The guns looked exactly the same. Everything looks exactly the same. I'm not. I don't know why that game had a lineup. I really don't. Because <laughs> it's like you you paid however much money to get into packs, and then you're standing in a line all day to go play Halo a couple times. Um, they also had uh, a, another thing I didn't get a picture of was uh, the Doom BFG edition, which was like with the controller, and um, it had, they had like 3D glasses, and it looked like mm, I don't know. It's like if you own Doom Three, it's it's the the Doom Three basically for for Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty kind of a thing. Uh, I didn't really like the sound of that. Uh, to be honest, it's like one new map in three D. That's it. Come on. Um, here's a picture of the Natural Selection booth, a uh, Natural Selection Two booth. I've never played Natural Selection One, so I wasn't too much into this, but I figured I'd get a picture of it anyway, uh, just just for for whoever is interested in how their booth looked. Um, and here's actually Bastion. Uh, Bastion was is actually something that Fl uh, Flying Hat from our forums is really interested in, uh, which is kind of neat, I suppose. <laughs> uh, I figured he'd enjoy the pictures. Um, next up is actually uh, the Tribes Ascend booth uh, for at the at the Alienware. There's actually uh, two of them. Um, the first picture actually actually I'll show you here is uh, this is the one. The official one, and if you played the game there, they would give you gold, uh, free gold in the game. So I, I, I got like 250 gold just, just for playing a game I normally play. And I really like the Alienware booth here because, uh, well, I hate Alienware hardware, but um, the booth, uh, they had like these large projectors playing the game. And uh, they gave out two free t-shirts um, to people who won, and I unfortunately did not win. Uh, we tried once and we didn't win because some idiot went, was on the wrong team. What a jerk. Anyways, um, if you, in case any of you know uh, High Res Bart, uh, here's him like commentating some matches. I think we're going to the Blood Eagles, which are on my right. Uh, they are, uh, I'm worried about this, and they're going to have to go out there and fly out here as well, just because they didn't fly out there. Why is Mike Nisi, who's on an Alienware laptop, <laughs> think, thinking of making this purchase? Clearly, yes I am. <laughs> That's exactly what I want. League on, on the Alienware. Oh, let me freeze the thing running at. Yeah, we, we were kind of not impressed. This is like a three year old game or something. Two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. The fly laptops are gaming kids. I, I went to a panel actually uh, with the Let's Players. Uh, there was like Chugga Conroy, Proton John, and some other people. And uh, I did it purely on the basis that, yeah, I, I make Let's Plays too. So I'm like, oh, well, you know, maybe, maybe I'll do, do a panel. I guess I didn't really read what they were going to do, so, but they did some kind of game stuff, where which it had glitches. And I remember Retsu Prey making fun of that. Uh, so I was kind of amused uh, when they had more glitches uh, <laughs> again. Um, and I, I have to be honest with you, I've never walked in a room with with a bunch of people like this and, and ever felt like the coolest person in the room. Like, um, you can kind of take a look at them and uh, at this point I guess you guys know how I look because of earlier and I'm just like, wow. Great haircuts. And the lovely Lucas. 
Good Jen, we'll give you your card. Yes. Okay, there's someone over there in the middle. Okay, so for those who don't know what's going on, we're doing. <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't know, the game that they're playing is some sort of custom programmed game about games, uh, and it's mostly console title related stuff, so it's like obscure questions, and I was just, uh, I don't know, I, I, I wasn't too into it, uh, I was hoping that they would actually do a panel, um, and I kind of laughed when they actually started commentating uh, the broken projector, uh, so... You know, all good times. Now, um, I got two items left on the list. Uh, and uh, so first of all, I want to say that the PAX is really, really good. Uh, I've never been to... Uh, I, the only convention I've been to that's comparable is Toronto's uh, uh, Fan Expo. And that, that was like a billion times smaller than this. This was huge. Absolutely huge. It was incredible. And the one game I was really, really into here uh, that I had only read about, but I had never actually gotten the opportunity to try was actually Hawken. Um, now, I, I, you know me, and I, I really like the, the mech games and all that, but this one is fucking insanely good. I had to go back and play it like five different times because I, I had so much fun with it. Holy shit. And, you know, I'll let you guys watch the videos first and I'll talk a bit about it. Here you go. Now, um, the thing about that game, if you, uh, I know I have like really bad shaky cam camera, but that if you look up the trailers and the gameplay for it, it doesn't do it justice. They have done so much in the last couple of months. It looks so fucking good. It is amazing. I, I, I so want to show you this game when I get the opportunity in, in more detail, but I had so much fun with it. It was really good. I don't know really what it is, but... I'm always drawn to the mech games for some reason because they're, you know, it's kind of like simulation stuff. But they are rather slow-paced games and they're, you, they're supposed to be actual simulators. This one is fast as hell. And you got like the sniper loadout, which I was just rocking the entire time and I had so much fun with it. Uh, it was really good, really well done. And, and like, I like the effects with like the sprinting, like going side to side. It wasn't really sprinting, it was like kind of like this dodging with your jetpacks and... Um, the the effects and the and the sound and the feeling, it was incredibly great. Uh, it's the best mech game I have ever played. I can. It's going to be free to play. It's going to come out in December. Um, but what they had was on the last day, I came in and I, I played it uh, one more time, and I got two things out of it actually. Um, for being in first place, they gave me access to. They gave me an Alpha Two key, so I get to play in their Alpha. Uh, when they bring that out soon, uh, so if if I'm able to, I'll, I'll post. Some, I will definitely post some footage of this because I love this game to death. And uh, the other thing they gave me is a T-shirt, and I love this T-shirt. <laughs> but it is it is, I I I cannot praise it more. This was basically the one game I absolutely loved. Um, I tried Torchlight Two, and I had the opportunity to actually talk with some really high up people there, and I got some questions answered about. Uh, well, I, I asked them mo mostly about how the 
the online worked if it was like authenticated items. You know how like Battle.net works like with Diablo 2? And I asked them about that and they told me uh, that it's not authenticated. It's 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 completely local so you can bring single players into multi multiplayer characters and stuff like that. And the reason for that was modding. Uh, well, two reasons. It was modding and that they're, they're a really small development team with a, a limited amount of resources, which I said is fair. But they really want to have the modding in and all that. So th th what, what it was telling me, though, was that the idea is you play it with your friends if you want a legit game. But if you if you do play it public and someone does join your game with like a ton of hacked items and stuff and it's like clear that they're cheating or whatever, you can ban them and it's like attached to their Steam ID or something uh, something along those lines. So they will never be able to join your game again, which is which is good. You know what? I think it's a fair compromise. Um, I asked him. I said, "Why don't um, why don't you just make like a system similar to how uh, Diablo 2 did it with like closed Bell.net and open Bell.net for one for ladder, one for botting kind of a thing?" And he said um, they considered it, but as I said, they didn't have enough time and the resources to do that. So, and that's fair enough. And I really hope that you know you guys support Torchlight 2 because it, it really is. It really does. I tried it, and it really is a really solid game. It's really good. Uh, and you know what? It's not a big deal. Just play with your friends, kind of a thing. It's, uh, you know, ladder would be nice, but I'm not really going to complain about it because it, as I said, the gameplay looks great, and I, I was content with playing. Uh, you know what? When I play Diablo games, I play them with my friends anyway, so tsh, see if I care. But yeah, um, I didn't really meet anyone else of uh, no, uh, that's notable. Uh, I know Day9 was there, but I didn't get an opportunity to see him. Notch was apparently there. Uh, didn't get to see him either. Oh yeah, Notch had this... Uh, um, I don't have any pictures of it, but it's this, this, this art booth. Like literally, the, all he had was like uh, Minecraft art, like people actually made art, and that was like, I don't know, the oddest thing I've ever seen at a at a gaming convention. Well, it's, I guess I haven't been to many gaming conventions now, have I? And uh, the other thing uh, was uh, I want to talk about the indie games, and um, there was a lot of indie developers there, and I have to say that I was I was less than impressed uh, with the indie uh, indie developments because. A lot of them were either kind of obviously kind of ripping off something or it, they were really, really buggy or something like that. And, you know, I don't want to undermine their effort and all, but, like, I'm, I'm, I usually like a little bit of indie games, and those ones were... I didn't really see anything interesting, um, unless you count Hawken, but Hawken is, like... Uh, that's not really, I, I don't know, that's... Indie is, is kind of implies one or two people. Hawken, I think, is a small team of like five or six people or something I don't know uh, f at least main people um, so uh, you know you could you can classify however you want but as I said most of the games there were like kind of just 8-bit you know the kind of the 8-bit games and stuff actually most of the stuff you find on green light right now is probably the stuff you see there uh, most of the most of the bad stuff you see out, uh, there like there's some guy who's advertising his um his Android slash iPhone game, and the and the tablet he gave me was extremely laggy. Like the game was ran really poorly on there, and I kind of just thought to I, like I thought in the back of my mind, I'm like I'm like, dude, don't why why would you hand me a tablet which is clearly not capable of running your game? That's that's not gonna you know that's not gonna sell anything to people. Um, but I didn't want to be impolite, so I did, I told him I'd buy it, uh, but I didn't. Yeah, I kind of lied. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of a dick in that sense, I guess. I feel, I feel kind of bad, but you know, he kind of he kind of just ambushed me while I was walking around. I'm like, I didn't know what to do, so I tried to make him happy, and I'm like, I gotta get out of here. I'm not good in social situations. Uh, I guess that's it. Uh, I I don't have much else to say uh, other than, uh, yeah. So Hawken Hawken, fucking amazing game. Honestly, I I loved it so much. I cannot wait to get my hands on that again. I see it as, it's not it's not supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to be free to play, and it's I don't see it being like a game um, that you play a lot. I see it as kind of one of those like kind of nice to play games once in a while. You know, I think I'll play it to death for like one month, and then, you know, maybe I'll bring it up on a stream once in a while. I can see it being that, basically. Uh, which which is fine. I, n I don't mind that at all. Um... I fucking loved it. I thought it was great. 
Uh, so, you know, it's kind of like, I guess, like Counter-Strike Go, or uh, I'm playing a shit ton of Tribes right now. That's why I was kind of like hovering around the Tribes booth trying to get a t-shirt, which I didn't get one. <laughs> but I play a lot of Tribes right now, so um, I don't know. It's it's kind of, as I said, it's one of those multiplayer games, which is kind of, it's really fun just to get on really quick with your friends and, and kind of just play it. I could see it being that. It has a niche it can fill, and it fills it fantastically well. Honestly, that would be the one game I want you guys to try when that comes out. And uh, last but not least, another little piece of swag I got was uh, this Counter-Strike bag. Actually, I got a bunch of beta keys and skins and shit for a whole bunch of games, but I'm just trying to list the notable stuff. The last one was this Counter-Strike bag uh, I got, which was... Um, uh, it's, a, it's a cheap, flimsy bag, but it, it's kind of cool that I got a bag for it. And uh, I'm going to tell you actually a bit of a, I guess, a bit of a story. And I'm going to end the video off on this, uh, which is basically um, I played in a Counter-Strike tournament, which was uh, teams of five. And uh, so I'm going to I'm going to put Nisi's video up after this of, of me playing in that tournament. So I'm, I'm deeply sorry for her shaky camness, but uh, I guess it's the best you can get. Basically, what you're going to see is... Um, we were playing pre-round, and then we, and then the way it works is, when you restart the game, that's the you're starting the match, and so they all voted yes to restart the match. The other team we were against. Um, uh, actually, I should mention before that that um, we actually skipped a team. We bid into the second bracket because the team before us apparently they signed in and then left, and so like literally within 15 minutes, like we were we were matched against them, but they they had already gone. For some reason, like they literally came and just went fucked off somewhere, so we, we didn't know what happened. So we automatically won that match, but we couldn't leave anywhere. So we weren't playing the game, but we weren't allowed to leave anywhere, or else we were disqualified. So we were like, what the fuck? So I kind of played in this tournament with um, uh, four other random people. I just kind of saw them, like, hey, I'll be a part of your team. And they're like, yeah. Um, and they'll be like, oh, what are you good at? I'm like, oh, I, I play sniper most of the time. They're like, are you good at it? Any good at it? And I'm like, ah, no. <laughs> um, but uh, that's what got. So there were just four people, four strangers. I I, I decided to play with them, uh, and because I just wanted to have a bit of fun, and I was a little disappointed that I literally was waiting around for an, maybe an hour and a half before I actually got to play, because uh, counting in the 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 beginning and then like the beginning of setting it up, and then the time we were just waiting to actually get our match. I was kind of pissed off that I was spending more time waiting to play a game than I was actually playing it. It was kind of a waste of my time, considering how I wasn't expecting to win. Um, and the really disappointing thing was in this matchup you're going to see is uh, uh, when the game starts, I did really amazingly well. Like in the first round, um, I killed three people or something. And so we had this winning streak. And the way it works with Counter-Strike competitive is it snowballs. So if you win the first round you're unlikely to win the second, the third, and so on, because you have the money to buy the weapons. Uh, but after we got like a streak of like three or four wins, they decided to give up and try and restart the game, and we're like, what the fuck's going on? And they claimed that uh, apparently a random had joined instead of an actual teammate, and I, I didn't verify it at the time, like, because apparently somebody left and then came back in. I didn't check to see if it had their clan tags or whatever. Um, I, I'm not going to call foul play because that's not really that good sportsmanship, I guess. I should have checked. I should have seen. But I was really disappointed because we didn't have that same... I died pretty, er, pretty early on when the game uh, restarted. Didn't get as lucky in that first round. And... Uh, and then it snowballed and we basically lost most rounds. And uh, and the thing that kind of annoyed me is that the team, uh, well, we obviously weren't coordinated because we, we didn't even know each other. But I was a little disappointed at, because um, I was able to handle the other sniper pretty well. Like, I killed him, like, twice. And I was trying to help my own team out by buying them weapons and things like that. So I didn't, I kind of sacrificed my own money to try and help them out. Um... And they kept complaining about their sniper, and I kill him. Like, I killed him a good two times uh, with, with with my sniper rifle, but then he got me in the third round, and I wasn't able to afford uh, the sniper, well, the, the op sniper anyways, uh, which is, I guess, what you're supposed to get in competitive. I don't know why. Um, I'm not supposed to go for the SSG, apparently, uh, or, so, or so I'm told. <laughs> but, um, but 
he killed me once, and then the team was apparently completely helpless against him, and I couldn't afford another sniper at that point, so we just we kept losing, and then they're like, "Oh, that that sniper keeps killing us." So I'm like, I'm like, I can take him out. Just just someone buy me a sniper, and nobody ever did. So I'm just like, okay, whatever, fuck it, whatever. And then and then the worst part was at the end was in our final round. Um, you'll notice that uh, one of my teammates literally goes directly into my line of fire. And I was a little bit agitated at that point because I'm just like, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, buddy? You see me shooting. You came up behind me. What the fuck? But uh, but I I, I kind of held my tongue. I didn't I didn't I didn't say anything bad to him or anything like that. I, I just shook their hands afterwards and we we left. But I don't know. I I I'm going to go to PAX next year and I'm definitely going to do an, another tournament, but preferably not something like Counter Strike Source where I need a coordinated team. Because unfortunately, um, as you might have guessed, I didn't actually meet up with anybody here except for Nisi. Nisi doesn't play Counter Strike, uh, so if you guys are kind of, if you're going to PAX next year, I'm coming every year from now on to PAX Prime, not not East. Fuck fuck the East Coast. Not nah, just kidding. Um, but PAX Prime is great, 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 great convention. So I I really hope uh, some of you jobless fuckers can scrounge up enough money to to come down and and see me. So. Uh, so without further ado, I'm just going to leave the rest of this video uh, with, with DC's so-called recording of uh, my Counter-Strike game. So uh, please enjoy responsibly. Alright, hey guys, Nisi's here, and uh, Mike's playing some uh, CSGO in a PAX tournament. And uh, starting up with the first round here. And we'll do a quick little pan so you can see everyone that's in the PC free-to-play area. A lot of these people are playing the CSGO tournament. A lot of people are playing. And then right out there is Seattle. We're in the annex. Okay, here we go. And he's playing with the pickup group. Uh, they're called Fine Wine. He's got that guy over there on the right in the blue shirt. Obviously that's Mike. I got these two guys, these three guys over here, and uh, really they lost that first round after they were up 3-0. Then they had to restart because apparently they had a random person on their team. I don't know what's going on, but whatever. Zoom in a little. No, never mind. I guess we can zoom in a little bit. But. Oh. Mike got two right there. Oh man, he's the last one alive. Oh. play first to win nine rounds is the rules of the tournament and then there's like four maps Three oh no, that's not good. Man, they're saving money for something.
Nice job by Mac and Mike there. Oh man. Now they're going to start buying some serious stuff, apparently. So apparently they're they saving for a couple of rounds off to a bad start. Oh, Mike got one. Mike's doing his usual sniper with the op. Mike got him with the op. Oh, and they won. 4 1. Very nice. So we're around round number six here. Um, I don't know how good the quality is going to look on your guys' side, but it looks pretty good actually uh, on my screen, so it won't be so bad. Oh man, he got flashbang. Oh, and you got another one. I think Mike's walking or stalking. There we go, one left. Three on one. Oh, and they just won again. That's four two. these guys are actually really good. Um, Mike's fitting in really well. Mike missed a couple shots there. Oh, you got that one. 2-2 two, two now. This is round number seven, they're four and two. Oh man. Five and two. Okay, 
Rodrigo, last round, first half, it's 5 2. Swapping weapons using money. <laughs> oh, and he's down. He's down. Oh, that's not good. Now they're switching teams. Uh, now I believe they're on the counter terrorists at the moment. On seven, I got a rally here. Come on, Mike, you can do this. to two, that's not good. the tournament unfortunately. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Bye bye.